I've been fascinated with surround sound for quite a while and I've been frustrated really with, with the lack of titles. But frustration is what breeds ideas. I know this is 180 degrees from where everyone else is playing, but I love it. And Better Than Ezra is a perfect partner for that because they want people to experience this record the way they meant for it to originally sound. And I think they're, they were limited in 98 with what they could do sonically. I moved to New Orleans in 1999, and for me, immediately I was just taken over by the music in the city. It's just such a rich heritage. I was a fan of Better Than Ezra, but I, you know, I really hadn't kind of picked up this new record, How Does Your Garden Grow? I hadn't really spent time with it. And I got down here, everyone I talked to, this is the record, you need to pick this record up. So I went out and I picked this record up, and to this day, it's, it's one of my favorite records. I've always loved it. Electronic music was really starting to explode. Um, Chemical Brothers, uh, DJ Shadow. It was just this amazing time where electronic music was really taking hold, uh, not only just in Europe, but in the States as well. And steadily, I was becoming less and less interested in making the guitar-based album. The band had just finished touring for Friction Baby, so we decided we should just build our own recording studio. It will allow us the freedom to really try and do what we want to do. Because of our success with Deluxe and Friction Baby, the, the label, Elektra, um, didn't bother us. They were out of the picture completely. Our approach was to hold as much in our hands and control as much as we could. And we were into the idea of letting whatever our musical influences were and what, whatever we felt compelled to do, following that muse, so to speak, following that idea. It was kind of gloves were off. We were gonna make this album that was a complete, pure expression of what we were into and what we were listening to. We were searching for a producer who could bring something else to the table, who maybe was from a different genre. Malcolm Byrne is quite an interesting character and, and super talented. Dark, conflicted, I'm a little angry, a little crazy, a little funny, a little madcap. And I just like the idea of having a producer who was in New Orleans, who probably wasn't a Better Than Ezra fan. Hearing what he'd done and meeting with him and talking to him, we felt like he was the person that could really help us achieve the kind of record we wanted to make. You know, we kind of felt like we could do the pop rock thing. Um, we were good at getting the live performances down, but we wanted somebody to push us. We hired Malcolm Byrne to bring something to the band that we didn't have, and that was a foil to the band, someone coming from a different angle on how to approach a song. Malcolm would be up here in the control room, kind of the mad scientist, and we'd be down here figuring out the songs, and that's really how the album went. Malcolm Byrne had a lot, a lot to do with the way How Does Your Garden Grow Sound, no doubt. I knew who I wanted to get to do the string arrangements. Uh, it was a guy named Carl Berger, and he had done all the string arrangements for Jeff Buckley Grace, my favorite string arrangements ever. And just so happened to be, he lived up near where we decided to mix the record. So we packed up all our stuff and headed up north to Woodstock, New York, to do additional recording and do the string arrangements. Dreamland is a full-on recording studio. It's not just a mixing spot, so made the perfect opportunity to, to get those strings recorded. When I think of Dreamland, I always think of the cover of How Does Your Garden Grow, and there's the stained glass window. That's the stained glass windows that lined the walls of Dreamland. So we were all excited. We'd, we'd mixed the album, or mostly mixed. Uh, we got in our rental car and we drove down to uh, Manhattan to play Sylvia Roan our magnum opus. And we played her five tracks. We, we started with Particle. And then I think we did Je Me and Sylvie and Pa, the instrumental that starts the record. And I could just see she just immediately checked out. <laughs> you know, three songs in, she was like, uh, not getting this. I'm sure she didn't know, <laughs> didn't know what to think. You know, she was kind, but I don't remember her being super enthused, which now hindsight I know means she was thinking, what the hell has just happened, you know? I don't think the label was really sure what we had done at that point. They were not expecting that, that style of a record. Ultimately, whether it's a big success or not, 
whatever you created, you have to live with later. And are you proud of it? Or did you make something because you thought it would sell? While the initial reception sales-wise and from our label for How Does Your Garden Grow was uh, kind of a letdown for us, time has kind of uh, been the great legitimizer for that one. I think if we hadn't pursued the artistic end of this the way we did, it wouldn't be being mixed in 5-1. You know, I ran into the guys in 2011 backstage at a show and um, had this idea about mixing this record in 5.1 surround. Didn't quite know how they'd take it, threw the question out there, and immediately they were very, very positive about it. We got a hold of the 24-track tapes from New Orleans and shipped them to Blackbird, kind of the Rolls Royce of studios in Nashville, and was successful at transferring the analog tapes to, to a hard drive. And so that was kind of when I realized, wow, Rich is up to something. At that point, I knew exactly who I wanted to mix the record. Uh, longtime friend Jay Rustin, who was one of my favorite mixers. And Jay has worked with everyone from Brian Wilson, from the Beach Boys to Metallica. I mean, that's pretty, pretty wide range if you think about it. But when you listen to this record, you need that. I was like, how, are we, how, how is anybody uh, going to be able to recreate the sound in the Merc? Of, of that album, because it has a thing. And I showed up to Blackbird and listened to the first mixes of, uh, of How Does Your Garden Grow? And, um, and I was amazed at how together it was on that first listen. And really, when we were listening to the mixes for the first time in the 5-1 in the studio, I heard stuff that I hadn't heard before. I mean, I remembered it once I heard it, but I was like, you don't hear it on the album. Now you hear these little things that, that are we spent a lot of time making happen, you know, and uh, it gave me chills, actually. <laughs> there are things that I remember we did, but I don't even think about anymore because I, because they aren't super clear on the record. But as soon as I hear them clearly, all of a sudden I, I could, you know, see myself or Kevin or whoever was playing the part in that space. All the different disparate elements, all the sounds that we spent so much time doing are audible, you know, and it's and it's because of, you know, the, the 5.1 and the separation that you can hear all these elements that I had forgotten were there. As soon as you sit down and you sit in the sort of key spot right there where you're centered in all the speakers and you're like, wow. Up to that minute, I was still skeptical. Now, like, I knew it was gonna be cool, but I didn't really realize truly what the format can bring. It makes you wanna do every album in 501. <laughs> the experience for me in regards to, you know, how I grew up hearing the stereo mix and on the radio, Surround, it's totally different. It's like a different album, you know, that's the beauty of it. When you first hear the strings pop up, the hair on the back of your neck is gonna stand up. I mean, the love that was put into this record, I, I, don't feel, I don't really feel like as a fan that I've really listened to this record until now. And I think that's what I want people to get from this process. I feel like the fans are gonna love it. I feel like I experienced it a different way the first time we sat down and listened to all the songs together. I mean, I just, that's hard to believe but very true. It's just like, wow, you're hearing it again for the first time. It's really cool. This is Surround in all its glory and what it can do. And it's a gorgeous album that's setting up, using the format to its fullest potential. And honestly, I think more have to follow in its footsteps. It's kind of like finding a hidden door and pulling off the lock and seeing this wonder that is how does your garden grow for the first time. Do we have the same watch? I think we do. It's a little weird. <laughs> Let me see. Dude. That's a little Oh, weird. look at that.